The subject of this video is, do I need a visa to come to the UK as an EU or EEA worker? That's in 2021, after Brexit. Now, we're already past Brexit, of course, but the effect of the withdrawal agreement has been to preserve the treaty arrangements that secure free movement within Europe. So at the time of making this video, there's uh, no material difference between the position pre-Brexit and after Brexit. But when we get to the end of this year, of course, from the uh, 31st of December, once we hit the 1st of January 2021, then the position will be different, whether there's a, a deal or, or no deal with the EU. So um, I'm just going to go over the position and I've, I've prepared this diagram to uh, explain things to you. So let's make a start. Some of these involve you applying for a visa and some of them uh, don't. So broadly for visits uh, to the UK from the 1st of January 2021 for less than six months, no visa will be needed for EU or EEA nationals if you're coming to the UK as a visitor for the purposes of uh, general business activities or intra-corporate activities. So the general business activities will capture a lot of what many people will want to do when coming to the UK for work uh, for a short period when it's for less than six months, but not, not everything. So what do, do they include? Let's go into that. Well, it means that you can attend without applying for a visa. You can come for less than six months to attend meetings, conferences, seminars or interviews. You can give a one-off or short series of talks or speeches. These can't be organized as a commercial event, though, and they can't make a profit for the organizer. You can negotiate and sign deals and contracts. You can attend uh, trade fairs for promotional work only, provided you're not doing any direct selling. A list of these, by the way, is in the description below. I've set, set out in the notes in full. You can carry out site visits and inspections. Uh, you can gather information for your employment overseas and you can be briefed on the requirements of a UK-based customer, provided any work for the customer is done outside of the UK. So those are the things you can do uh, as it, what are referred to as general business activities without applying for the, for the visa. You can just come straight to the UK and do those. What I would recommend is, is you have a letter uh, setting out exactly what you're going to uh, uh, be doing and uh, feel free to contact me about that if you, if you like. I usually do that for my clients so they can present that at the border and there can be clarity about which of those provisions they actually fall under. Uh, now the second option is if you're doing intra-corporate activities, that's if your company has a branch in the UK and a branch overseas and you're uh, coming in in that capacity. So as an employer, sorry, an employee of an overseas based company, you can advise and travel shoot, uh, troubleshoot, you can provide training and you can share skills and knowledge on a project that's within the group, provided that no work is carried out directly with clients. Um, also an internal auditor, if you're an internal auditor, you can carry out regulatory or financial audits at a UK branch of the same group of companies. So um, subject to some limited exceptions, visitors cannot otherwise uh, work in the UK unless they apply for a visa. Now, in most cases, this is going to be the skilled worker visa or the intra-company visa. I'm going to do a separate video on the arrangements for frontier workers, which is where you're living within Europe, but working in, in the UK. Um, but for most people, it's going to be sponsorship on a skilled worker visa or uh, on an intra-company visa for broader work. So let's go to uh, option number three. So sponsorship for broader work on an intra-company uh, visa. This requires sponsorship by a UK entity for which the sponsoring entity would need a sponsor license. So the UK company would need a sponsor license. It can take up to eight weeks to secure, although most of my applications are granted within two weeks. And then the visa processing could take a further two weeks. Once the license uh, is secured, then you could be sponsored. And assuming you, that you'd remain engaged by the foreign entity, you could be sponsored on an intra-company transfer visa. 
So you'd need to show that you'd worked for the overseas entity for more than 12 months unless you're earning more than 73,900. So if you are, then you don't need to show that you've been employed for uh, more than 12 months. So that that is a, a useful visa and allows you pretty much to do anything if uh, you're in an intracompany uh, transfer position. The downside is you need to apply for a sponsor license if you don't already have one. Um, but the upside is you can do a much broader range of work, uh, um, effectively unrestricted. But in that situation, you're employed by the overseas entity, but you're working in the UK. Um, the next one then is the uh, skilled worker visa. So this is sponsorship for broader work on a skilled worker visa. A skilled worker visa allows you to come to or stay in the UK to do an eligible job with an approved employer. This would mean, again, sponsorship and in being employed by one of the uh, UK uh, entities um, rather than by the foreign entity. That's the difference. So, uh, for, so, so that, that broadly is the position. Those, those four options are going to apply to, for, uh, to most people. Now, if your stay in the UK is for longer than six months, then it's more likely that the options three and four are, are going to apply. Uh, because it's for, if it's for more than uh, six months, then you can't secure a uh, visit visa. You can't simply come under the, uh, under the visit rules. As, as I say, say, in most cases, a visa is not required for a visit, um, but you can't, for, you can't uh, benefit from them if it's for more than six months. Now, it is possible you, you could stagger your stay, so to come in for short periods, but it's important to demonstrate then that you're not here uh, in a frequent or successive way that amounts to residence in the in the UK. So if it's less than six months, then the options that I've talked about apply. If it's more than six months, then it's more likely that options three and four are going to apply to you. Um, there are some other potential options, um, but these are most likely to be the uh, popular ones. And I'll do a separate video, as I say, on frontier workers. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me if you would like uh, advice on these points. Thanks and bye for now.